Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. How do we make glucose from carbohydrates? Today we're going to talk about carbohydrate digestion and absorption. These are very foundational aspects of metabolism. However, we're going to go in detail about the metabolism or the breakdown of carbohydrates. So let's get right into it. When you eat breads and pastas, or let's say pizza, right? you have carbohydrates in there. When it hits the mouth, there are glands in your mouth called salivary glands, both intrinsic and extrinsic. They release something called salivary amylase. Salivary amylase will start the process of breaking down the carbohydrates. Today we're going to talk about the two major ones, amylopectin and amylose. Now there are others, but these are the two majors that we're going to talk about. Amylopectin has a bond called alpha-1-4 glycolytic bond. What that means is that there's a carbon number one is attached to the carbon number four of the adjoining molecule. It also has a alpha-1-6 glycolytic bond. So carbon number one is attached to carbon number six of the next molecule. It has two different types of bonds, okay? Amylose just has 1,6 glycolytic bonds. Now, when you eat about 10 to 15 percent of the process of breaking down the carbohydrate occurs due to salivary amylase. So when you eat, basically you start to chew, your oral cavity where, it's, where the um, amylase is produced starts to break it down, and the process continues into the pharynx, esoph esophagus, and into the stomach. Now, once it hits the stomach, the amylase becomes deactivated. So it has less effect once it hits the stomach due to the acidity, okay? Now, once it hits the stomach and then goes into the duodenum, the amylase has been deactivated, so it needs to get amylase from somewhere else. This is where the pancreas comes in. Now, a lot of people just think about pancreas as something that it produces insulin and glucagon, just management of blood sugar. Pancreas is very important for digestion. So, once the food hits the small intestine or the duodenum, okay, it sends a signal from the duodenum. It releases a hormone called cholecystokinase. That CCK will stimulate the pancreas two different ways. One, it will open up the sphincter of ODI, so the enzymes that are produced in the pancreas can be released and dumped into the duodenum or the small intestine. And number two, it stimulates called the acinar cells. The acinar cells what, is what produces amylase or pancreatic amylase. Okay? It, other produce, it produces other enzymes, but today we're talking about the breakdown of carbohydrates. So it produces pancreatic amylase, which basically has the alpha-1-4 bonds like we talked about, right? So pancreatic amylase and salivary amylase is able to break down this 1-4 glycolytic bonds. And we'll talk about how your body is able to break down the 1-6 bonds later, okay? So the amylopectin and amylose, and, uh, amylose basically from the breakdown of carbohydrates, hits the duodenum, and that is broken down into maltose, malto, uh, maltotriose, and uh, alpha limit dextrins. Three different components, and these are what we call polysaccharides, okay, or disaccharides. They are going to be further broken down by what we call brush border enzymes, and we'll discuss that in a second. Cholecystokinase also helps contract the gallbladder, and gallbladder contraction basically releases the bile and helps to digest fats. So it has more than one effect here, okay? So let's go into the other mechanisms here. Now, if you find this information useful, we do have a free health transformative um, site where you can join for free and interact with others. I'll put the link below. So let's go ahead and continue, right? Once it hits the small intestine, 
the maltose, maltotriose, alpha limit dextrins, and lactose will be broken down even further by what we call brush border enzymes. And these enzymes are basically attached at the microvilli or the enterocytes. Enterocytes are these cells in the small intestine that help break down glucose and other things. And it, it has enzymes that will break down these sugars. So maltose, maltitriose, alpha uh, limit dextrins, and lactose will be broken down by these enzymes. These enzymes are called maltase, sucrase, isomaltase, and lactase. Maltase basically breaks down these two sugars. It makes it glucose and glucose, right? It, when it cleaves it, it's glucose and glucose, okay? Alpha limit dextrins has, <clears throat> is broken down by sucrase partially. Sucrase breaks down sucrose as well as maltose and maltotriose. But isomaltase is what really helps break this down. Now this right here has the one and six bond and that is primarily broken down by isomaltase. And isomaltase will break it into glucose and glucose. Lactose is broken down, to, uh, broken down by lactase to glucose and galactose, okay? So there are a few different sugars that are produced here. Glucose, glucose, fructose, and then there's also galactose, okay? These are the major ones that are being produced, okay? Once they're produced, they have to get into the enterocytes or the cell of the intestinal lining. And that is done by two different mechanisms. The first one is it has something called a transporter called GLUT5, and that is primarily used for fructose. So fructose has its own little passage that it can get into the enterocytes, okay? The other ones like glucose and galactose need to use uh, sodium glucose transport. What that means is that it uses sodium as a way to get into the cell, okay? Now, there's a pump here called the sodium potassium pump, and this pump pumps out three sodiums to two uh, potassiums into the cell. So it creates a negative gradient for sodium and then it pulls it from the intestines and then allowing glucose and galactose to get into the cells. Now when you get the three sugars, glucose, galactose, and fructose in here, it wants to get into the bloodstream and they use something called a GLUT2 transport. Once it crosses over, it goes to the hepatoportal vein and goes up to the liver and goes through different processes and glucogenesis or glycolysis and so forth. So that is your basic mechanism of how carbohydrate is digested and absorbed. Now, what can go wrong in this process? Let's go back. Let's say you do not produce enough saliva, therefore not produce enough amylase. That's one problem, right? Another problem is that you have poor peristalsis through the pharynx esophageal into the stomach, so it's very, very slow, okay? Another aspect is your duodenum, when the food hits the duodenum, because you have, let's say, celiac disease or some sort of uh, autoimmune disease that blunts the microvilli, it prevents absorption of your glucose, okay? Another thing is that in your small intestine, it produces that hormone called cholecystokinase. If there's issues in the duodenum, you're not going to produce as much hormone, therefore less signal to the pancreas to open up the sphincter vodi and the acinar cells that produce these enzymes. So. When we look at it, there are multiple areas that can be problematic. One being here, let's say celiac disease, okay? And then brush border enzymes. If you have uh, damage to the brush borders or these enterocytes or microvilli, okay? 
<coughs> you're not going to produce these types of enzymes that will break down this, the sugars or, or carbohydrates. So it's not breaking it down appropriately because of lack of brush border enzymes or the availability. Or what you can have is you can have deficiencies that impact this transporter system or improper utilization of the sodium potassium pump. Remember, the sodium potassium pump requires ATP or energy. So you don't have enough energy to do this transport aspect of it also. And then if it doesn't go to, it doesn't go into the liver properly. Let's say you have a fatty liver, it's going to be uh, underutilized or inefficiently utilized and there can be problems. So that is carbohydrate digestion and absorption and some of the problems that can be seen in the process of absorption and digestion. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.